At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So today I'm gonna to teach you how to make your own reptile egg incubator by turning this into this. So come with me and I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this reptile incubator out of this old cooler. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. So if you've never built your own incubator out of one of these things before, it can be daunting because you might not know all the materials that you need to get and are you doing it right and if you screw up, are you going to kill all your eggs and all those fears that kind of go through your head, but really it is so easy to do. So the first thing you've got to do is make sure that you've got all the proper tools that you need in order to complete this project and it's not a lot of stuff actually. So you're going to need a high powered drill with a pretty sizable drill bit on it. You're gonna need metal tape, and I'll explain why in a second, of course, a tape measure. You're gonna need 12 inch wide heat tape. I suggest strongly against using the three inch tape because that just isn't going to provide enough heat in the incubator, so 12 inch. And then get yourself a Vivarium Electronics thermostat. And all you really need for an incubator is the 200, and I'll explain why later on as well. So this is an old cooler. This one doesn't happen to be broken. The fan still works, and I'm gonna explain why a fan in a big incubator like this is actually really necessary when you're going to be incubating your eggs. But where you can get these is Craigslist. You know, you can go in, just type in cooler, a bunch of listings will come up. People will try to sell these things for a grand. They'll try to sell them for 500 bucks. Scam, don't do it. Don't pay more than like $250 to $300 for a big one like this, and I'll tell you why. If you go into liquor stores and you ask them if they have any broken coolers like this, you're actually doing them a favor if they do have it, because if these things break, liquor stores don't know what to do with them, and they have to pay somebody to haul these things away. So if you go in and say, hey, I'm looking for one of these, they might actually give it to you for free, because you are actually solving their problem on what to do with these things. So. Craigslist or liquor stores is a perfect place for you to find a big old chunky cooler like this that makes an absolutely perfect incubator. All right, so when you get these things, you've got to clean it out really well. You've got to disinfect it, soapy water, any disinfectant that you can use, and then prop that door open and just let it air out for a couple of days. It's a really good practice. So I've already done that because that would be really boring for this video if I just sat here and, you know, wipe stuff down and then blah, blah, blah. So I've got my tape measure out. And the next step that you want to do is you want to measure from about here all the way down across the bottom and all the way up the other side. We're going to start right about here because we're going to drill a hole up here and where the heat tape starts, they have a little connector. So you want to give space for the connectors here. So I'm going to start right about there and I'm going to measure the entire interior here. So the reason why we're measuring the interior is so that we know exactly how much heat tape we need to buy. And then you measure the base as well. So then you measure this wall all the way up to the top now. And we're going to stop right about there. All right, so once you've measured the interior and know how much heat tape you need to buy to line the interior, you've got to really be cautious about where the fan is when you're drilling from this side. This is extremely important because if you drill through that mechanism, you're going to kill the fan and you want that fan in your incubator, especially one this tall. All right, so now that you've drilled your hole, one of the things that I should have said is to always wear safety glasses. I, I didn't, and I've got metal shards in my eyes, but I still can finish this project. But guys, if you're gonna do this and you're gonna drill through metal, always wear safety glasses. Okay, so the reason why we drilled our hole at the top instead of the bottom is because your thermostat is gonna sit on the top. You don't want a bunch of cords dangling, and it's also because of the way that we're going to place the heat tape with inside the incubator. You always want your hole to be on the top, and it doesn't need to be a big hole, just enough 
to fit the heat tape cord through it, and then you're also going to stick the probe from the thermostat through this hole too. So for those of you who are new to this, this is what heat tape looks like. It's very thin, it's plastic, but it's got a heating element within the sheets of plastic that heats up to whatever your thermostat is set to. But as you can see on either end here, we have metal conductors that run the entire length of the heat tape. At the ends right here is where you wanna connect your wires to. So when you buy heat tape, you buy the connectors like this. So they're gonna come with four plastic pieces and two metal connectors. All right, so all you do is take that stripped end and you just simply thread it through the hole. And then what I do is I kind of wrap it around like this and just tuck in that last little piece back into the hole. So there you have your connector and then it's just a matter of taking your pliers and just giving it a lot of pressure to squeeze that down. So that's what it looks like. It's all affixed. Do not though crush this piece of the connector. That's the piece that the heat tape goes in. All right, so once you have it done to the other side, then you take this connector piece and you can see that down the middle of it here, there's a groove. And what that does is that enables you to get that piece over the piece of plastic like this. Now make sure, and this is extremely important, make sure that you are crushing that directly over the metal conductor here like this. Line that up and then just push, get your pliers out and give that a good squeeze to make sure that the little teeth in this metal thing are poking through the plastic and making a connection with the metal underneath. So that's that. You are halfway there. You have the cord connected to the heat tape. All right, so now you're taking these pieces of safety plastic and these are actually manufactured so that the connector fits right in here and up here is the cord. And these are the protector pieces. So you just take this piece here like this and put it so that the connector is on the bottom and the cord is at the top. Thread the cord through the top like that, hold it there with your finger, then take the other end and simply snap it on the bottom. Snap it on the, snap it. You're gonna snap it, it's, it's gonna snap. There we go. So that is how that should look. So that the live wire is protected by the plastic and the metal that is now conducting electricity is also protected. So you can touch this when it's plugged in, you're not gonna get electrocuted, which is, you know, a plus. Once you have your heat tape built inside the incubator, you need to tape it down all the way along the length. So nine feet of length, you need to tape that down. And don't use duct tape or gaff tape or Gorilla tape or anything like that because it's not really permanent. And depending on what temperature you're incubating your eggs at, that tape might not be able to withstand that kind of heat and therefore it's gonna get gummy and it's gonna break down. But if you use metal tape, this stuff is almost indestructible. It's powerful, it's sticky, and it's not going to succumb under heat like any other tape is. So it's my suggestion to always use metal tape to tape the heat tape to the inside of the incubator. So that shouldn't be too hard, right? So there's a back to the metal tape. You just take that off like that. And then it's almost like aluminum foil where you just can kind of press and it'll form to what you're doing. So that's one side done. And there's a reason why I'm taping the heat tape on the side and on the bottom and on the other side instead of over the top. First of all, you have the fan on the top, which is exactly where you want the fan. But as we know, heat rises. So if you have the heat tape running on the top, let's say you didn't have a fan, well then all that heat is going to be in the top of the incubator and it's gonna be much colder than the eggs you need to incubate on the bottom. So you want that fan to circulate that warm air and you want the heat tape on the bottom so that those eggs on the bottom shelf can be just as warm as the ones on the top shelf. So there's a method to my madness by doing it this way. All right, so we got all the heat tape done. We had a one little bump right there in the corner, but the way that the shelf is gonna sit, that's gonna be under the shelf. It's not gonna be a big deal. The rest of it is nice and smooth and flat, exactly how it should be. So, heat tape is all complete. All right, so once you've got all the heat tape secured and taped down and all finished, it's time to hook this bad boy up. So, Vivarium Electronics isn't one of my sponsors. Maybe they will be one day, hint, hint, but, 
I use this product on every single one of my herp racks. I absolutely love these thermostats. And what you want to do is you want to get at least the VE200 pulse proportional. So think about it like a water faucet that you're turning on and turning off, trying to get the water hot, cold, hot, cold. What this does is it does the same thing for electricity. It sends little pulses. It's like turning off and on the faucet of the electric input into the heat tape. And that's how it maintains whatever you set this at. That's the temperature of the heat tape. It's a great product, but make sure it's pulse proportional. So once you have the thermostat set up, just simply set that right on the top of the incubator. You take the cord that we attach to the heat tape, and on the back of the thermostat, there's a little plug-in. Just simply plug that bad boy in. Now, you take, hang on, you take, hang on, you just, hang, hang on, okay. Oops, hang on. All right, so then you take the probe that's plugged into the back of the thermostat and you plug it right into the hole that we made for the cords. And then what I do is, well, you take off the little plastic guard first. And so what I usually do is I plug the thermostat into a extension cord and that way you can place this wherever it is that you want. All right, so here's the probe coming through the hole that we drilled. You are not going to be taping this to the heat tape like you would on a rack. This goes right in the box with the eggs and sits literally on top of the eggs. So whatever you set the thermostat to, that's what you know this is going to read on top of those eggs. And you want to bring it through here a little bit so that it's sitting in the middle shelf. Not on the top shelf because it's going to read 89 degrees up there. Not on the bottom shelf because it's going to read 89 degrees down there. And what's going to happen is 89 degrees down here, heat's going to rise. It's going to be way too hot up here. If you do it up here in this egg box, it's going to be way too hot down there. So you want it in the middle on the middle shelf. And then we're going to turn on that fan to circulate all the heat so that the entire incubator will be at 89 degrees. So that means that we hooked this up properly and we are getting an electric current through the entire run of the heat tape. And it's not 200 degrees here, 100 degrees here, 90 degrees there. So it's getting a constant flow of electricity through it and the heat tape was set up and is working properly. So there it is. It is really that easy to set up one of these old coolers into an incubator. My other incubator is full, so I'm gonna transfer all of the egg boxes from that one into this one. But I've got a surprise for you guys. I just checked on one of my pied females and we're going to learn how to set up an egg box to go in this incubator. So she just laid this morning. She's sitting on a whole pile of eggs. Look at that. There you go. Good girl. So I'm going to get these eggs away from her and I'm going to set them up in an egg box. All right. So she was bred to this beauty. This is a banana Leo het pied female maker. And so the results of that clutch are going to be a lot of Leo banana pieds that are actually gonna be female. So this guy is one of my prized males here in my family. So this is their daughter from last year. So this is a possible leopard banana pied female. So that pairing that we're about to set up will produce more of these banana leopard pied females. So that's a really important clutch. But this is my girl. I'm raising her up from last year and she's gonna be a really good breeder one day. This is what I use for my egg boxes is this vermiculite. And this is the medium grade. I don't really like the medium grade, but it was all that they had and it works just fine. So I like the bigger chunks, but it all works the same anyway. All right, so I put fresh vermiculite in this box. And what you wanna do is you wanna get it to about the halfway mark. I always use warm water and I've been doing this long enough to kind of gauge how much water to use with this vermiculite. But the rule is two parts vermiculite to one part water. So the goal we're trying to get to is when you take a clump and squeeze it, a couple of drops of water comes out that's totally fine, but you don't want a lot of water coming out of the clump. And you want just enough water for it to clump like this. You want it just to clump up like that, and that's perfect right there. All right, so I'm gonna take the eggs out in here instead of in the herp room because it's much more light in here and it's better for the video. So. I've got to get these eggs away from this girl, and when a ball python lays her eggs, this is the most docile girl that I have. I've had her for years, and I love this snake, but that motherly instinct kicks in, and she is not going to want me to take her eggs, so I've got to do this very delicately. So don't make any sudden movements. Don't make any jerky movements. 
she's going to try to squeeze around those eggs as I'm trying to lift her out. So we're just going to be very gentle with her and we're just going to kind of unwind her from the clutch and just set her aside. So look at this rattlers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs. This is her best clutch ever. I think she only laid six eggs last year and the year before that five, nine really good eggs. Good girl. All these eggs are attached to each other. Some people separate them. I don't. I incubate them all as a clutch like this. And what that does is when you separate them, you, oh, she's getting a little agitated here because I'm playing with her eggs. But what that does when you separate them is it increases the chances of rollover. So a lot of people put grating on the bottom of their egg boxes and then use plastic straws to hold them in place. I don't do any of that. I simply put them as a group because this is how they were laid. I'm going to very carefully pick up the entire clutch and I'm going to put them in the egg box. Just like that. And there you go. And now this is ready for the incubator. All right, so we're going to put this in to the incubator and we're going to make sure that that probe is right on the eggs. And that is that. And I will definitely do a follow-up video when it's time for these guys to hatch so that you guys can all see what awesomeness came out of that clutch. All right, Rattler, so I've got all the eggs from the other incubator set up in this incubator. This is now gonna be my ball python incubator. The other incubator is going to be for my colubrids, for the bull snakes that I work with. So, you know, you can go to one of these companies that makes custom incubators, and an incubator this size would probably run you about $1,500 to $2,000. But I got this cooler for about $200, and then all the materials that I used to build this incubator probably ran another two to $300, and that includes the thermostat. So by doing it this way, you're saving almost $1,000. So, you know, Rattlers, part of the reptile adventures is not just me traveling around, finding really exotic animals in the wild. It's taking care of my own stuff at home, and that is also part of the adventure. So anyway, guys, comment with a tip or trick on how you set up your incubator and how you guys set up your eggs so that other people that watch this video can learn from you guys as well. And until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.